good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, we're going to be taking a look at a new Rayquaza, which is going to be coming out rather soon indeed. This was revealed on the live stream over the weekend, with all that Japanese championship malarkey going on. And it has been translated by the lovely David Hockman. I know. He's still there. He's still helping. So starting off, 130 HP is really good. It means that Pokemon coming out like Silvalli, for instance, won't be getting a one-hit KO. That, that's pretty relevant, if I'm honest with you. It's got a weakness to Lightning, which is not ideal. But it's not actually that big a deal. Because Pikachu and Zekrom are getting a one-hit KO anyway. And Raichu and Alolan Raichu are getting a one-hit KO anyway. And Zapdos doesn't hit for weakness. Still not a great weakness to have. Resistance to fighting we do like very much indeed. Because all the fighting decks are going to be coming out to try and counter stuff. Like Raichu and Alolan Raichu. Having a resistance. Quite nice. And Retreat Cost of 2. Nah. You can't use U-Turn Board, but you can't use Buff Padding. Retreat Cost of 1, I'm fine with. Retreat Cost of 4, I'm fine with. Retreat Cost of 2 or 3, I'm just kind of like... Eh... I'm not terribly excited. And it's also a colourless Pokemon. So you just don't get any real tricks at the moment. You don't get a huge bonus. You're not hitting anything for weakness. I mean, you don't even have double colourless energy anymore. And the thing with which we replaced it is Triple Acceleration Energy... Which can only be put onto evolution Pokemon. And Rayquaza's not an evolution Pokemon. So you can use any kind of tricks like Welder, etc. Or Malamar, more on those in a moment. But it's not a great time to be a colourless Pokemon. But what does it actually do? While well, the first attack for two colourless energy does 30 damage. And says that the defending Pokemon cannot retreat during your opponent's next turn. Cool. It traps a Pokemon in the active. And we've seen lots of attacks like this in the past. My favourite use for this was when I used a Gabite in a Garchomp mirror match to stick a Holucha in the active. Now, the reason it worked so beautifully there was Holucha had resistance. So my opponent would never actually see it KO'd. And because both Holucha and Garchomp have free retreats, they weren't playing any switching cards because all their Pokemon had free retreat. And Holucha was having zero damage dealt to it, but Holucha can only attack a Pokemon EX, which Garchomp isn't. So I stuck Holucha in the active and won the game. My friend Tommy, my good friend Tommy Roberts, he did a very similar thing previously using Snorlax. And Snorlax, the one from Plasma Storm, had a lovely ability... As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's active Pokemon can't retreat. Now, that was an ability, so it didn't do any damage. And that was really good, because what he would do was just strand something like an electric in the active. Something that just wasn't attacking, because it didn't have the energy. And then just kind of sit there and chill. Though he did also use it against Torlucha. This is... It's really an alternate win condition. It's an extra way to win the game. Remember, you win if your opponent is unable to draw a card at the beginning of their next turn. Which means that if you can strand it in the active, with your opponent being out of switching cards, you can just wait there until your opponent draws their entire deck, and they lose the game. Now, unfortunately, this will lead to your opponents playing a lot slower than they did before you started doing this. It's, it's an inevitability. Always call a judge if you think your opponent's slow playing. It's not everybody, but I have noticed that some players, when they realise what you're doing, just start playing really slowly so the game doesn't actually end. Now, this is a better tactic when you're in top cut. If you're up by a prize and the game ends in top cut, you win. So, all you need to do now is wait till you're ahead on prizes... And then strand something in the active and wait for the game to end. It's a fun little alternate win condition. Now, you are doing a bit of damage while you're doing this. You know, Rayquaza's are sitting there rocking 30 damage. But against something like uh, Reshiram and Charizard, for instance, that's a 9-hit KO. So maybe you can find your opponent without switching cards. Where they've put all their resources into other Pokemon. 
and then strand something in the active. Reshiram and Charizard is probably just going to outrage you. But there are other big Pokemon that you should be able to strand active, and that could be kind of fun. Not the main reason to play it, but a handy little bonus. And of course, with it being two colorless energy, Welder will pay the attack cost very nicely. Or you can use Malamar. Or you can use Tapu Koko to turn it into a single energy attacker. There are a bunch of options for colorless energy acceleration at the moment. And Rayquaza can use them all. Just not triple acceleration energy. Because you ain't an evolved Pokemon. But what does the second attack do? Free colorless energy, 120 damage. Discard an energy attached to this Pokemon. It's only earlier in this video that I told you that 120 and 130 made a difference. Rayquaza has 130, so it won't be KO'd by 120. But it does 120, so it won't KO 130. And for a single prize Pokemon, I kind of like this. I mean, yeah, we can do better, but there's always some kind of catch. Granbull can do 160 for one energy. If you've got no cards in hand. Executor from Unified Minds can do 180 for free energy. As long as you're willing to discard your entire hand. We've recently seen the Golurk coming around over in Japan. I really like the new Golurk. For two colorless energy it does 160 as long as you have no supporter cards in your discard pile. It does work. I'll pop a link to a winning deck list in the description. The point is... We've seen other Pokemon do better than this, but they're generally stage 1s and there's always a catch. Rayquaza just does 120 for 2 energy, and that's better than something like Volcanion. Volcanion does 110 for 2 energy, but there's got to be 2 other energy somewhere on your side of the field. Just a flat 120 can be really good, and it will KO something like Volcanion, it will KO something like a Zapdos. Or a Malamar. But then you still run into stuff like Naganadal that just aren't going down. If you need a nice non-GX attacker, this is alright. But the problem is you need to be able to get the energy on there. Now the other thing it can do is cover your weakness. So if you're in a fire deck, hey this is weak to lightning, it's not weak to water. Or if you play this in a Naganadal Quagsire deck, allows you to accelerate water energy... You can be using this and it's a basic that isn't weak to grass rather than a stage one that is weak to grass. You will get a bunch of KOs with this. It's a nice non-GX single prize attacker. But you've got to get the energy and that really is the thing here. If you can get the energy on here easily enough then we've got a basic Pokemon doing 120. No it's not getting everything but it's knocking out a decent amount of Pokemon. It's two hit KOing a lot. And you're doing all right. If you struggle to get the energy on, this is going to be far too expensive. We also go back to the problem of this is a colorless Pokemon, so it's not actually hitting anything for weakness. And we want to be hitting stuff for weakness. And it makes us sad that we're not hitting anything for weakness here. Because let's say you were hitting fighting weakness. Well, then you're doing 240 and Pikachu and Zekrom, hey, that's going down. Water weakness means that you'd be able to get rid of something like a Blacephalon. Fairy weakness, you'd be able to get rid of something like an Ultra Necrozma. This is a big problem with colorless Pokemon nowadays. You're not hitting weakness. You still got weakness, you're still being hit for weakness, but you're not hitting anything for weakness. And it turns what should be one hit KOing most non-GXs and anything that's weak into KOing most non-GXs and two hit KOing GXs. Boo! Never mind, ladies and gentlemen. And given Rayquaza free wassies, it seems exactly like the kind of card where you should have a copy or two in your binder because you might want to tech it into a deck at some point, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the very definition of a free wassy card. But I would be very interested to know what you think about this, so go nuts in the comment section. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. 
And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't even have any Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.